All right, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for taking time out of your night to come and join us and learn a little bit more about the respective institutions of this session. So I want to do a couple housekeeping reminders before we get started here tonight and uh, clarify a couple questions that we've been getting about the format of tonight's session. So to ask questions uh, to the individual institutions, you use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen rather than the chat feature. So your microphone and your video are turned off. So the uh, moderator and the panelists will not be able to hear or see you. So just a reminder that there, the presentation is being recorded and will be available on the StriveScan website uh, within about a week of tonight's event. There are a lot more schedule fairs coming up in, within the next few days and across the, the upcoming weeks. And then we just remind you to come back to the ShriveScan website where you register for tonight to join in with the rest of the spring fairs. And first, we will turn it over to our first representative, Natalie, to share a little bit more about her institution, and we will kick off tonight's webinar. All right, thank you guys. So my name is Natalie Davis and I'm an admissions counselor at UMW. Um, and I'm also an alum of Mary Washington. So um, I love UMW so much that I just stuck around and was wanting to share more about it. Um, the University of Mary Washington is a public four-year liberal arts and science university located in Fredericksburg, Virginia, with a location about 50 miles north of Richmond and 50 miles south of Washington, DC. Um, our students have diverse research, internship, and job opportunities because of these locations near these capital cities. It's also really great to live near a city, but maybe not have to live in one. We were founded in 1908 as an all-female teaching institution, but have adapted, have changed, have diversified over those years. Um, right now, UMW has an undergraduate population of around 4,200 students which kind of right in between a small and a medium sized institution. I like to call it medium sized. Um, but like I said, I went to UMW and I'm from Virginia um, and it was a perfect distance kind of from where my hometown was. We have students coming from all different places representing 40 different states and 56 different countries. We also have over 60 different academics of areas of studies for our students with our most popular majors being psychology, business, education, the social sciences and biology. We really want our students to be an expert in their field, so their major, um, but also have the opportunity to be incredible speakers and writers and learn about anything that piques their interest. Because we are a smaller institution, our students have incredible interactive opportunities, both in and outside of the classroom. With an average class size of 19, our students have many opportunities to engage, participate, and share their voices. Um, our student faculty ratio is 13 to one with all of our faculty being professors. We don't have any teaching assistants or graduate assistants at Mary Washington. Um, and the professors at UMW are incredible. I obviously have a biased opinion, firsthand experience, um, but they are really active and involved in making sure that our students are succeeding, that they um, are getting the opportunities that they're interested in. There are so many different options for students to interact in the community. Um, downtown Fredericksburg is a fun, small, quaint downtown area. Um, but there are so many opportunities to participate. Um, I always like to say college is your launching point. It's a time of trial and error. And we wanna provide you the space to do that. We wanna um, give you the opportunity to find your voice and to find your passions. Um, at Mary Washington, we are so passionate about building communities and creating your family here on campus. Um, a few ways we do that is through clubs and activities um, and sports. And we have over 150 different clubs um, so if there's something that you're involved in now, we probably have it. Um, and if there isn't, you can grab some friends and make that club for yourself. Um, there is just about something for everyone. The most successful students at, in, at UMW or even in college um, are involved in something in some way or another. It really helps you um, explore those options that are available to you as well as work on your time management skills. Um, we have a lot of really awesome opportunities. We have a huge study abroad program if you're interested in studying abroad. Um, we do alternative service breaks. Um, we have a club called Best Buddies, working with people with different abilities. Um, we have a botany club, a prison club, sustainability. So there are so many different options um, you can check out. 
Another way to really find your people at Mary Washington um, is joining athletics. So we are division three in the Capital Athletic Conference with 24 different varsity sports. Um, so there are plenty of different options for that. As for application, we are on the Common App and also have a Mary Washington specific application. Um, those are our deadlines. You can see November 1st is the main one to kind of um, that stands out because that is our binding decision date. Um, so if you know Mary Washington is your number one school, make sure that you apply by that early decision. Otherwise, early action is the best deadline to apply for the honors program, the nursing program, and maximum consideration for scholarships. Um, we are test optional at Mary Washington, which means that you don't need SAT or ACT scores. Um, and we also don't want you to have to pay for the Common App. So we, I put a Common App fee waiver on this page as well. Um, if you want more info, you can scan that QR code. Um, that will take you to our page with more information about our um, specific application. Um, but that is a little bit about what the application looks like. Make sure that you are working hard on your essay. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that I've read an essay with the wrong school in it, um, or maybe some detail um, or grammatical errors. So make sure you're checking on those things. Um, we do have an optional interview at Mary Washington. So once you've applied and submitted an application, you do have the opportunity to um, sit down with an admissions counselor, share a little bit more about yourself. It is a great chance to just add a face to the name for the application. Um, and just for sitting down with us, you do get a $1,000 to $2,000 scholarship. So um, make sure that you are checking out those deadlines and dates when we are offering interviews um, and things like that. Um, a little bit about our contact information. So this is kind of our general Mary Washington specific contact info. Um, we also started an admissions blog. So it's called Mary Wash Admissions Blog, really creative name. Um, but there you can find a lot of different perspectives. We have some student profiles. We have professors who have added some tips and tricks. Um, we even have admissions counselors giving you the key to an application or an interview or an essay. Um, so we have all these different options kind of available to you on our website. Um, if you want to find out who your specific admissions counselor is, you can scan that QR code um, if you can see it. Um, and you can kind of find the exact admissions counselor or the point of contact that you need to, um, to contact us. So again, thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Awesome, thank you. And then we will pass uh, the, the mic over to Colin from Salisbury University. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Colin. I am the admissions counselor from Salisbury University who reads for all students who go to high school in Virginia. I'm also a Salisbury alum. I graduated in 2017 with a degree in uh, business management and a minor in economics. I was also an out-of-state student when I went to Salisbury. I'm from New Jersey originally, uh, but now live here full time. I'm also going back to school this fall for my MBA. So a little fast facts about the university. So we are located on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Um, I love it on the Eastern Shore because the beach is only half hour away. So if you like the beach, you'll love living in Salisbury. Um, our mascot is Sammy the Seagull. Um, I call us the Goldilocks School because of our size. We're not too big and not too small. Um, that just right size. Our average class size is only 24 students um, with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. And all of our faculty are also full-time professors. We don't have any graduate assistants or TA teaching classes on campus. And our faculty are pretty amazing as well. Um, I love them. Um, they, get to know, they get to know your name in class, um, which is pretty incredible as well. Um, there's lots of different ways to get involved on campus. Um, we have lots of different clubs, organizations, um, as well as club and intramural sports. And then some uh, fun facts about the school. Um, we have some notable alumni, which include uh, Baltimore Ravens owner, Steve Bishotti, um, and also Purdue Forums CEO, Jim Purdue. And then last but not least, we're also a division three uh, school. We have 21 division three teams. Um, we're best known for football and lacrosse. Um, this year, currently we're number two in the country for lacrosse. Um, here at Salisbury, we do have 46 majors and 73 minors across four schools and one college. Um, the big thing about all of our majors is that most majors here at Salisbury do require to have an internship completed before you graduate. And all these majors either offer um, research opportunities, clinical hours, or um, an internship. So that's great for hands-on working experience. Um, 
We're best known for uh, business. Um, biology is the biggest major on campus. We have a brand new pre-med track as part of the biology program. Um, nursing is also very big on campus um, with one of the highest pass rates on the NCOX exam in the state of Maryland. Um, also communications and psychology, two big programs as well. Now we also do have lots of resources available to students to support your tuition on campus. Um, this building pictured on the screen is our library. This is the newest building on campus. Um, this opened in 2016. Um, it's one of the biggest libraries in the University System Maryland School System. Um, and it was just named one of Crimson Review's top 20 libraries in the nation. So it's beautiful and it's my favorite place on campus. But as far as the resources go, um, we have career services, which help with resumes, cover letters, interview skills. They also hold job fairs throughout their semester. Um, we have on-campus tutoring in the Center for Student Achievement. Um, we have the Branding Center, which helps you with any paper on campus. So lots of different ways um, to get um, any resources done on campus. Um, we also guarantee on-campus housing for two years. So freshman and sophomore year. These are all pictures of our residence halls on campus. So they're really nice places to live. Um, they've all been renovated within the last five years. Um, all of them have heating and air conditioning. Most of them have carpeting. Um, we also do offer parking to all students on campus or even freshmen can record on campus uh, their first year. Now, the food is also really good. Um, I had a meal plan all four years. Our dining hall um, is buffet style. Uh, we've been named among the top programs in the US for our dining. Um, we also do all the cooking in-house. Um, nothing is out, nothing is outsourced through third parties, which saves you money on your meal plan as well. In addition, there's numerous satellite locations all throughout campus that includes a Chick-fil-A. There's a Starbucks cafe on campus. So lots of different dining options on campus. You will not go hungry in your four years at Salisbury. Now, these are the application overviews for freshmen. Um, there's three major deadlines. The first one is early decision. An early decision is binding. So if you get to Salisbury um, under early decision, you're required to attend for the fall semester. That is our earliest deadline date and also the earliest notification date from us. Um, it also gives you the best consideration for admission when applying that route. Um, the next best one though is early action. That's an I apply to Salisbury and that's some, most students also choose to apply to Salisbury as well. That deadline is December 1st and you hear back from us by January 15th. And again, that is non-binding. So you can apply to as many schools as you want to and not make a college choice until May 1st. Um, on the right hand side of their uh, class profile, um, so you can see our middle 50% uh, SAT range, ACT range, and GPA range. And we are also a common app school, so if you're applying to multiple schools, you can use the common application. And we're also test optional. So if you don't have test scores, um, that's okay. You can apply test optional. And then this is what we look for, um, your high school transcripts. Um, if you have test scores, you can send those test scores to us. Um, we also need at least one letter of recommendation to complete your application. Now, when you apply to Salisbury, you can set up for any merit-based money automatically based on your GPA and test scores. If you don't have test scores, you just use your GPA. Now, also being from Virginia, you automatically get what's called the Good Neighbor Scholarship of $6,000 a year off of the out state tuition. And that's good for all four years. You don't need to apply for that scholarship. That is an automatic guarantee. Um, you can see our out-of-state tuition with room and board is around $32,370 a year, and that's before the $6,000 scholarship is applied to that. So um, it makes us a pretty affordable uh, Maryland State School. And then last but not least, we do offer in-person visits uh, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Um, you can sign up online. Um, my information is below as well. So if you have any questions on the person who reads for um, students in Virginia, um, my email address is below and uh, thank you so much for watching. Awesome, thanks Colin. And we'll turn it over to East Carolina University. All right, everybody, just gonna share my screen here. All right, I hope you all are doing well tonight. My name is Allie Hortonberry. I am the freshman and transfer admission counselor here at East Carolina for students in Virginia, DC and Maryland. So we're just gonna jump right in here. We are a large public state institution in North Carolina. I'll get a little bit into our location in a minute, but right now let's go to our student experience. So we come in at about 28,651 total enrolled students. So that's across the board. 
undergraduate, graduate, PhD seeking, visiting, so on and so forth. Um, despite being a large institution, we do maintain a 19 to one student faculty ratio. So you're gonna have some great opportunities to be face-to-face -face with your teachers in smaller class sizes because our average class size is 28. Of the 28,651 students, we come in at about 90% coming from North Carolina and 10% coming from out of North Carolina. So that 10% actually mostly comes from Virginia for obvious reasons. You guys um, are a neighboring state. We have over 500 student clubs and organizations. That's gonna include 15 campus ministries and 38 Greek organizations. And if you wanna see a full list, just type in ECU student activities. You can actually go on there and there's a little database where you type what you're interested in and it's gonna bring up every club and organization that applies to you. For um, residence life, we have 15 different residence halls that are going to be located in three different neighborhoods. So West End, Central Campus and College Hill. We have over 31 dining locations. That's gonna include two dining halls, six little quick stop convenience markets that you can use your meal plan at, and then 23 national names. We have a Chick-fil-A. Um, we have the only Raising Canes in the state. We have a Starbucks food truck, a Chili's, just to name a few, but we do have a few rotating food trucks that come on campus as well. For academics, we have 84 bachelor's degrees, 70 master's degrees, and 18 doctoral programs. So a lot for you guys to choose from. To give you a little idea, like a little sampling of what our students are studying, our top undergraduate programs are nursing. We actually do graduate the most nurses in the state of North Carolina, as well as the most teachers. And we have management, marketing, psychology, and elementary education. We are also the only school in the state of North Carolina to have a dental school, a medical school, and a college of engineering, all at the same institution. That's out of any school in North Carolina, public or private. So getting into location, like I mentioned, we're in Greenville, North Carolina. That's gonna have our main campus, our athletics facilities, health science campus and West Research campus. We also do have a small campus in the Outer Banks um, in Manteo, which is about two hours from our main campus there in Greenville. That's gonna house our integrated coastal studies program. I've included this nice map here so you guys can get a feel for how far we might be from you. Um, to give you a little idea, I actually reside in Richmond and it's about a two and a half to three hour drive depending on traffic to get to Greenville. For athletics, because I know some of you might be interested in that, we do have 16 NCAA Division I sports and we participate in the AAC or the American Athletic Conference. We do also have intramural sports uh, and club sports. So if you don't see uh, the sport you're interested in pursuing as a Division I sport, we probably do have it as a club offering. And students do get free tickets for regular season home games. Um, the Honors College. So the Honors College is a great opportunity for my out-of-state students in Virginia, D.C. and Maryland to get a scholarship. Um, so you'll have a, the chance to join a group of high achieving like-minded peers. You do receive tuition assistance. We have unique study abroad opportunities in addition to the many uh, study abroad opportunities that our school has. And you can get early admission uh, to the Brody School of Medicine and a few other graduate programs. And we do have a new state of the art residence hall called Gateway and that is specifically um, reserved. There are some reserved rooms for our honor students. Here are the minimum requirements here on the right. Um, please keep in mind, I will go into our um, admissions process, but the application for the Honors College is uh, typically due around December. So just have that date in mind. We do reserve 200 spots for every incoming class, both fall and spring. All right, to apply to ECU, we have an online application. For my out-of-state students, you can do the Common App or our Navigator account um, application, which is specific to ECU. We'll need your official high school transcript. Um, usually outside of COVID, we do require ACT or SAT test scores. Um, more to come for my students applying for fall 2022 as to whether UNC system schools are going to require those. If you've had dual enroll credit, you'll submit a college transcript and we do have a $75 application fee. If you need a, a tuition or an application fee waiver, you can look through, through NACAC or the college board if you need some assistance with that, just let me know. To keep some dates in mind, uh, our application opens around the 1st of August. Again, the Honors College is usually in the middle of December, merit-based scholarships in the middle of January, and our application this year closed April 1st. That's pretty standard for all years. To stay connected, here's our admissions email, our social media. We are offering in-person and virtual tours, live virtual info sessions, and student panels. 
And this is my information. Like I said, I'm Allie Hortonberry. I am your counselor. I'm here for you. Any questions that you have, no matter where you are in the search and decision making process, I have my phone number, my text message number, and my email address. So the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is go Pirates. Thanks, Allie. And we will pass it over next to Elon University. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Um, my name is Tyson Glover here from Elon University. Uh, we are really excited to be here. I'm going to start this in a little bit of a different way. The giant acorn. Uh, actually, Elon means um, oak in Hebrew. So very much uh, welcome to campus with that big acorn. That is a tradition we have for all of our freshmen coming in. You are welcomed with this acorn because you are going to grow over those four years that you are on our campus. Uh, we are located right in the heart of North Carolina. Right there on that map, you can see just over 6,291 undergraduate students. 80% of those students are not from there originally. 47 different states represented and a 19% racial and ethnic diversity. Love to see that number continue to rise. Uh, to speed through this, Elon, by the numbers, four undergraduate schools, 60 plus majors to choose from and a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. That average class size there is 20, so it's not 200. We're gonna make sure that you get to know your professors, they get to know you, and it's really that great opportunity for you to figure out what it is you want to do uh, during your four years in college. Both inside the classroom and outside the classroom, we understand that learning happens, both opportunities there. Study abroad, we are number one in the nation for the last 16 straight years for study abroad. 79% of our students will study abroad at least one time. Anywhere you want to go, we really want you to have that opportunity. Internships are fantastic. 67% of those are leading to a job offer. Undergraduate research, service learning, um, and leadership. So plenty of opportunities to both learn inside the classroom and outside the classroom there. But life at Elon, want to first start off, the food is fantastic. I'm saying that also as a proud Elon alum from the class of 2017. Uh, 284 plus clubs and organizations, plenty of things to get involved in. And we are Division I. We compete in the CAA, the Colonial Athletic Association. And we are the the Phoenix, so 17 D1 athletic programs and teams. And where are our students going after this? They are going all over the country and all over the world with that degree, um, really all over the place. And I know that we're, we're talking about what to look for in the next four years, but what does life look like after those four years at Elon? Well, 95% of our students, they're employed, they're in graduate school, completing an internship, working for a service organization, out of that 95%, 92% of those students are in a field that relates to their career objectives. So we don't want you just to get a degree or a major. We want you to choose the right major and degree that works for you and for you to get a great job after that. Several scholarship programs that are available to every student the moment you apply, those are those merit scholarships. We also have several other opportunities for scholarships that do require a separate application. If you already know exactly what you wanna do, if you're on the PA or the PT track, that is fantastic. We have several accelerated programs as well. Three different ways to apply. We are on the Common App, our own app, and the Coalition app. There is no wrong way to apply to Elon University. We want you to have that opportunity uh, to choose where you want to go. Some important details coming up and what we really look for in those apps. That's a GPA range. We love reading those essays. That's one of my favorite parts of this job uh, is reading, understanding where you're coming from and also finding reasons why maybe you want to attend Elon. Uh, demonstrating interest, showing us, showing up and telling us why you're interested. And we are test optional as well. Some dates and deadlines to be aware of. I know it's early, but November 1st will be here before we know it. That's our only binding decision, early decision. You also have early action November 1st. That's non-binding, but you get your name in the pool earlier. And our final deadline, January 10th, with those other scholarship deadlines uh, coming January 15th. Moving forward and staying connected, um, I am your representative, your admissions counselor. So if there's any questions you have at all moving forward throughout the process, that is my number and email, my contact information. As I mentioned there, I'm proud Elon alum from 2017. So I love the place so much. I stuck around, y'all. It's a great place um, full of people who truly want you 
push you in the right direction. You get that acorn when you start out uh, as a freshman. And then at the end of your senior year, you're actually given an oak sapling. So you grow over those four years. Um, you're given the opportunity to be mentored, to show up. Uh, don't have to have exactly everything figured out when you show up, but you have two whole years until you need to declare that major, but plenty of opportunities right in the heart of North Carolina at Elon University. Thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. All right, and we'll pass it over here to Ben. Awesome. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to DePaul University. First off, shout out to the class of 2017 represented on the call. I'm Ben Hatchett, Assistant Director of Admission at DePaul and also a graduate of the class of 2017 and a graduate of DePaul University. So I as well have not left my alma mater yet, so I'm going to give my best six minutes of a relatively unbiased look at DePaul University, but I can't make any promises. Here at DePaul, we are an entirely liberal arts college and residential community. We're located just outside the city of Indianapolis, Indiana, so I am coming to you all, all my friends in Virginia from the Midwest, from Indiana, and I'm the counselor for Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic. Quick facts to kind of touch through before we dive in any further. Is that DePaul, you're looking at a close-knit community. We're a student body of just right around 2,000 students, again, entirely undergraduate. We have a couple strong pathways to name a few, like medicine and law and business. If you're looking to continue on your athletic career, at an amazing Division III school in the North Coast Athletic Conference. You can see that not only do we have strong athletics, but it's pretty special when close to 30% of our student body are also competing on and off the court, on the field, you name it. So that does add a lot to the sense of school spirit and camaraderie. Nationally ranked as both a liberal arts college and number one liberal arts college in the state, recognized for some amazing study abroad programs, number fourth in the country, based on students studying abroad, with 70% of our student body going away for a full semester, 90% of our students will complete some type of short-term off-campus experience by the time they graduate. You'll continue to hear more from me, but it's also, take my word for it, uh, a beautiful place, but also recognized by Conan Traveler as one of the 50 most beautiful college campuses in America. We are all about keeping that student-faculty ratio pretty small, where you'll have classrooms averaging 15 to 17 very rarely are they larger than 30, depending on the program. We like to keep it small, very much heavily writing and discussion based. We are a university and have two schools represented at DePaul, but this is the only time that you're going to see a line or a divide in between the two. At DePaul, we have our College of Arts, where a majority of our students find themselves studying. You can see that we have 49 different majors, 56 minors to choose from. And of course, our top 10 snapshot is listed there. What I love about the snapshot of majors, if there's something on there that catches your eye, know that there's also plenty more deep dive into the, the whole curriculum. But what I like too is that the social sciences, the humanities, STEM, well represented even in that snapshot. We also have an opportunity for our students to create their own major. If we would have met virtually three or four years ago, you wouldn't have found neuroscience or global health and several other programs listed. But what our faculty have actually gotten together to realize that our students are wanting these programs and we've matched what they were looking for. The same is true with our School of Music. We'll keep that uh, small classroom size, adapt to music curriculum to match your needs and interests. If you are a musician wishing to continue on your education full-time, we do ask that you apply through our audition-based process, specifically through the School of Music. While I am the counselor for Virginia, I have a counterpart just for the School of Music and happy to help connect you all at another time or help talk through what your music career could look like at DePaul. We have four main degree programs for our musicians in the School of Music, including a five-year dual degree where you can continue your studies in both schools respectively. While we're definitely focused on in the classroom experience, which is all about the liberal arts and getting you critically thinking and developing problem-solving skills and figuring out solutions that the world needs, we also want you to utilize some time away from class to put together a hands-on or meaningful experience connecting what you're learning in the classroom, in an out-of-classroom experience. What I mean by this, this could be a research opportunity. Once again, we're an entirely undergraduate school, which just means our faculty, our PhD terminal degree professors, truly need your help to complete year-round research. We have semester-long research and summer research grants and projects happening on and off campus. We also have a huge study abroad program that spans 45 different nations and 120 semester-long programs. We also offer short-term experiences like winter term and May term, 
which can be a really cool exploratory month long program. It's like a class where you could dive into a particular subject or topic or an area of interest. Quick little aside, I promise no student is harmed in the top left quadrant of your screen. The woman getting fitted with a neck brace is completing our EMT winter term certification program. So any of future aspiring healthcare professionals, that EMT winter term can be a really cool boot camp, a crash course into the healthcare profession. Internships as well offered year round, both on and off campus. You can see some partnerships, for instance, with Timmy Global Health and uh, over in Pune, India, Cummins, a diesel manufacturer and large automotion, auto, yeah, auto industry, I should say, uh, has a branch over in India that they'll take several to fall students each year, just to name a few connections that we have globally. What you also probably want to know is what are you going to do for fun? How do you fill that other downtime once the class period ends? We can't wait to get back to our 100% residential campus. A quick update for 2021 is that we plan to reopen campus as best we can for the fall. We have about three quarters of our students back as of today and have um, a little over half of our classes taught in person. So we cannot wait by your application time to continue to get closer to a, a more normal campus. Really exciting thing happened last week on campus. We offered a COVID vaccine clinic. About 1,800 of our community were vaccinated with Johnson & Johnson. So we're excited to continue to offer more outreach like that, working with the Indiana Health Department. But in a normal year, you have over 120 clubs, all kinds of athletics, shows, concerts to go to. And of course, I want to just give you a moment to look at some important outcomes of where you can go after DePaul. We have a 100% commitment to your success and strong programs in law, medicine, and a pretty impressive graduation rate in four years. Some deadlines to remember as you go through this process that run true to form. The moment you're admitted, you will qualify for a merit scholarship, and I cannot wait to work with you and read your applications as you continue this process. You can't be here 24-7 like I can, so check out all of our social media platforms. And here is my contact information if you have any questions or need anything as you continue your college search. Take care and go Tigers. Thanks for joining us. All right, awesome, thank you. And we'll pass it over here uh, to Emery and Henry and to finish up uh, this portion of the webinar. All right, let me see if I can get my share screen to work because I couldn't get it to work earlier. Let's see. All right, can we see everything? Hopefully, um, once it loads. So um, I am actually also an alum of Emory and Henry College. So shout out to the class of 2017, as all of us apparently are. Um, but I did leave after I graduated and worked and came back just to spread some of the joy that is Emory and Henry. Um, Emory and Henry College is a liberal arts institution located in Emory, Virginia. Um, we're on a stunning 335 acres nestled right in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, ENH is right around the corner from both Abingdon and Bristol, Virginia, as well as Johnson City, Tennessee. And we're actually only 30 minutes from the border of Tennessee, which is pretty cool. Um, Emory & Henry was founded in 1836 as well, making it the oldest higher education institution in Southwest Virginia. So here's some quick facts here. 100% um, of our students do receive financial aid. We have merit scholarships that range between eight, or sixteen dollars to $23,000. You receive one of those as soon as you're accepted. Um, we have about 1,200 students between our undergraduate and graduate programs. We have 20 men's and women's sports. Uh, we were D3 this past year, but we're in the process of moving to D2. Um, we have over 70 student organizations and over 80 academic majors and tracks. We have a 10 to 1 faculty to student ratio as well. And the classes are typically no larger than 13 people. So we like to keep it pretty small and personal here. Um, we have the most award-winning faculty among any Virginia college. And we also have opportunities for class projects, research, civic engagement, and community service. Uh, we do study abroad as well. And much like some of the other colleges here, um, we do send quite a few students all over the world, not to mention it is actually a graduation requirement here to study abroad. Um, we also have a lot of work experience and internships that are required for students to graduate. Um, one last little fun fact is that we are an 85% residential campus, so we do have quite a variety of um, students and dorm buildings that live on campus, and we also have parking available for all students here. 
Here's a list of some of our undergraduate and graduate programs. So you can see here, we actually have over 80 degree programs. Um, some of the most popular ones you're gonna see are biology, business administration, education, engineering science, equine studies, exercise science, international studies, politics, law, and international relations, psychology, and pre-health. Um, we also have the opportunity to create your own major here, which is another perk of a small college. And I've seen quite a few people who have created some of the most incredible degree programs out of that program. So our School of Health Sciences is located in Marion, Virginia, about 20 minutes from our main campus. Uh, we offer a variety of graduate degrees. We currently offer a Doctor of Physical Therapy, Master and Doctor of Occupational Therapy, Master of Physician Assistant Studies, and Master of Clinical Mental Health Counseling, all with the mission of rural health care or positions in health systems and administration. We also offer a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, which is new this year, and we also have an RN to BSN program, which we've had for a while now and been very successful with. One thing that's super unique about our college as a whole is our equestrian program. Um, so our equestrian program boasts 21 national championships in hunter dressage and equitation. And our equine study degree combines the business science and writing aspects of the equine industry to create an all around degree program and the most employable graduate possible. Students also have the option to board their horse at our state of the art facility or ride one of our 65 or plus lesson horses. Students do not have to be a part of the equine studies program to show on our team. And we have plenty of students that join us from all over the country and even internationally every year. Um, and I am actually the equestrian admissions counselor and recruiter. So I do all the recruiting for the equestrian team as well. At Emory and Henry, we are advocates for social justice and equality. Um, we value a diverse community of students, staff, and faculty, and we work to provide a campus environment where everyone feels welcomed and supported. The Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion works to provide ongoing programming, resources, and dialogue to students um, traditionally underrepresented. With support from our DEI staff and peer mentors, we empower our students to find and use their voice to advocate for social justice and equality for all. So we're the only college in the United States that actually offers a semester a trail, which is a pretty interesting program. And you get credits for this program as well. Um, we recently had seven hikers who embarked on this experience in the past 2020 year. Uh, three of those students transferred from Ohio, Colorado and North Carolina and four of those students came to ENH as freshmen. You can immerse yourself in learning about the backcountry and trail and prepare to hike a portion of the Appalachian Trail or the whole thing while you earn credit. Um, on campus, we also offer an outdoor adventure team, which we have scholarships for. Um, but that outdoor adventure team has a rock wall, a disc golf course, and our new indoor crag wall as well. So this is just a list of some of the jobs and internships that our students currently have or have had in the past. Um, and obviously this doesn't represent everything by any means, um, but our career center, which we just totally revamped last year, um, has such a variety of student interests and jobs that are available all the time. Um, my personal favorite part about our career center is the fact that after you graduate, you can use them for the rest of your life. So a year like this past year where a lot of people have lost their jobs, that's a pretty awesome resource to have to be able to go on our website as a student or alum and see what jobs we have posted because they're posting new jobs every single day and people are just out there looking for employees. Here's a little list of some of our alums and where they are now. Um, we have multiple Emmy Award winners. So we have uh, alums in the US State Department, uh, the President Pro Tempore of the California State Senate, a world renowned tenor singer with the Stuger Opera House in Germany, Vice President for the Academy of Country Music in Los Angeles, uh, the Chief in Diversity and Inclusion Office for Weinberg, Wheeler, Hudgens, Gunn and Dial. Um, we have alums riding horses professionally in the United States, Germany and the Netherlands. Uh, the CEO for the American Cancer Society is also an Emory and Henry alum, and the head men's basketball coach at Virginia Tech is also an alum as well. So we have quite a variety of alumni, and you know this really just barely scrapes the surface of what our alums are really out there doing. So our application process has actually changed quite a bit in the past year, as the rest of the world has. Um, in order to complete your application, it is super simple now. We accept the ENH application, which is on our website and totally free. We also accept the Common App. 
Um, we need official or unofficial high school transcripts, which means essentially that you can send me a screenshot or your counselor, whoever they are, of your actual transcripts. Um, and they just need to know the classes you're in as well as your grades. And you know, if it's early on in the year, we need to know which classes you're taking towards the end of the year as well, if that's possible. Um, but that's all we really need for the transcripts themselves. And we'll get the official transcripts later on in the year, but we can make the decision based off an unofficial transcript. Um, as far as the credit acceptances go, we take IB, AP, community college, or transfer credits. And the biggest change we've had this past year is that we are test optional for fall of 2022, meaning you do not have to send us your ACT or SAT scores. Um, so don't worry about that at all. Another change we've made is that we no longer require an essay either. So the essay will be required for the Common App because obviously you send that to multiple schools typically, um, but the Emory and Henry application does not require that you write an essay. That being said, if you do write an essay, send it to us. We will absolutely read over it. It's just not a requirement anymore. Um, we have quite a bit of available institutional aid. Um, like I said earlier, 100% of our students do receive financial aid. Um, the Academic Merit Scholarship is the scholarship that you receive immediately upon acceptance. This ranges from $16,000 to $23,000 per year. Um, and by the $23,000, I mean it automatically cuts your um, tuition overall over by about 65%. Um, we also have performance and affinity scholarships. So these are interest-based scholarships and there's a huge list on our website. So I highly suggest going to check those out because it is such a variety and it's just so nice to be able to get a scholarship based on things you're interested in. Um, we have a lot of grants available like the Emory and Henry Access Grant, the State Virginia Tuition Assistance Grant and a lot of federal grants as well. The Live Scholarship Program is a need-based program that we offer to students based on their FAFSA. And then we also have plenty of work study and student employment available on campus. So as far as work study and student employment goes, um, some colleges only allow students who federally are eligible for work study to work on campus. We let everyone who wants to work on campus get a job and we have plenty of jobs available in a variety of positions. Ninety two percent of the class of 2020 is employed or in grad school within six months. Um, one of my favorite personal percentages is that we actually have a 100 percent acceptance rate for vet schools. So if you're interested in pre vet, anything like that, um, that is a good percentage to know as well. Uh, students who graduate with a bachelor's degree from Emory and Henry will earn more over a lifetime. We value your decision to pursue higher education and make a difference in the world. Perhaps more important than salary is the connected life Emory and Henry will afford you to navigate and be successful in your career, your community, and among your family. It was so nice to talk to you guys. Um, my name is Odessa Thacker again, and I am actually the equestrian admissions counselor and recruiting, recruitment coordinator here at Emory and Henry. Um, but we also do base our admissions off of last names. So feel free to go on our website and check out who your admissions counselor would be. Um, feel free to reach out to us too with any questions, any information you'd like. And it's been great to talk to you guys. All right, awesome. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, we will uh, allow the last about two minutes or so of the time allotted in case anyone has questions. Again, feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen uh, to ask those questions to either an individual school or a counselor um, or just a general question if you have those as well. We can field those uh, for the next about two minutes or so. And while we uh, have some time left over, and we are um, allowing those typing in those questions I see in um, the chat box. I just want to go over uh, some last minute housekeeping things uh, for you all here tonight. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as we conclude tonight's webinar, uh, we just want to remind you that there'll be a survey when you click out of the webinar box here today, just some instant feedback for us here at ShriveScan, and we use that data to improve the future events. Um, there will be more sessions available throughout the next few weeks, as we mentioned at the beginning, and the recording will be available on the ShriveScan website um, within about a week of tonight's event. So we will al allow the room to be open for about another minute or so in case anyone has any questions, and we will uh, conclude tonight's webinar.